Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome again to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. I say again, welcome to my YouTube channel, Eric Broadus YouTube. And what is the um, subject that I'm going to talk about today? Well, obviously you can tell there's going to be some more military um, content. And today, <clears throat> I guess um, I've decided to We'll start um, with the United States Space Force. As a subscriber asked, hey, um, can you mention, um, you know, Space Force? And so um, I'll briefly go through what the requirements are in order to, um, to join um, Space Force. So this video is not going to be long as it's an introductory. As Space Force being a new branch of service, um, I had never... Um, done a series about what their standards were and what the requirements were. So this is the intro. So if I were going to um, <clears throat> call this video anything, um, it would probably be um, Close Encounters, you know, United States Space Force. So um, for those of you that may be Trekkie fans, Star Wars, or... Um, Battlestar Galactica, and you actually want to, um, you know, actually live that out, well, maybe through Space Force you may um, have your chance if you qualify. And Space Force, basically, um, this particular branch of service is an offshoot of the United States Air Force, as the United States Air Force has always been the one that has basically um, handled um, the space missions. You know, or they've always um, used um, many pilots, you know what I'm saying, from the Air Force through NASA. Now, they do use other um, pilots from and, and other members from other branches of service as well. But the Air Force was um, was one of the primary branches of service that they use in conjunction with NASA for space missions. But anyway, um, for the United States Space Force, okay, so um, this is just the enlisting side, you know, how to join. Okay, now there are um, three ways to serve the United States Space Force. Enlisted members, um, they participate in support operations. Okay, officers plan and um, manage personnel while civilians um, perform a mix of both support and management of Space Force um, operations. Now, pretty much this is the same like any other branch of service. Um, with the enlisted side, the enlisted side handles more of um, the tactical portion of um, the military mission and the officers operate more from the strategic side where they do, um, you know, the planning, you know, um, of the mission, the logistical planning and, you know, the organizing and your enlisted will carry it out. And obviously, um, you have civilians that function in uh, as civil servants at different grades. Some function from a strategical side some function from the tactical side and some can even run um depending on their grade and position run in between the two like a, a warrant officer would say in the um united states army or the other branches of service you know but anyway um let's roll with the um enlisted side okay okay now in order to qualify um, for Space Force, you have to be between the ages of 17 to 42 years of age. Uh, United States citizen, um, you must have a high school diploma or a GED with um, 15 college credits, you know, or um, GED. Okay, how do you apply? Okay, um, in order to apply, you can apply for Space Force through an Air Force recruiter um, via telephone local recruitment office or you can go on to um, Space Force's um, website which is uh, spaceforce.com okay and from there um, if you're confirmed and you meet all the qualifications then you work with a recruiter to be processed into testing okay now um, the test like with all the other branches of service um, it's the ASVAB test okay and what the ASVAB test does um, it, it's an assessment, so it assesses your capabilities in um, in four areas. Okay, it's going to be arithmetic, meaning math, um, logic or, or reasoning, um, mathematics, um, knowledge, 
working knowledge and paragraph comprehension okay and through these four areas it determines the strengths and your ability to withstand the demands um, for service and aptitude in um, specific areas or for certain career fields so it's the ASVAB test you know um, what all four branches um, um, use in order to assess um, potential candidates for certain career paths or certain jobs you know um, I'll make it plain and simple let's say if um, they have a um, part of the test to say mechanical and then you have another portion that may be say um, maybe something that's more say um, like air traffic control and then you have another area say that's general where you may go into supply or or cooking <clears throat> so now you can pass get a passing score in all three but whichever one that that branch of service um, deems that you scored you know really high enough on whichever the best which out of the say those three areas is actually more than that but if you might you might have scored say maybe um a 60 in mechanical and let's say in a general area such as maybe doing supply services or cooking say you score something like a, a 75 or 80 and then um i'm trying to think say in the other area you scored some say for air traffic control now air, tra air traffic control you have to score really high you know, but let's say in air traffic control, you scored, say, maybe, um, and let's say, uh, let me see, I gave a 75, man, let's say you scored something like maybe, uh, a 72 in air traffic control, that's not necessarily, um, even though you still did pass, um, for certain career fields, um, you have to, re they really want the cream of the crop, so, even though, even if, say, if air traffic control was your highest score, if it doesn't hit a certain range, like, say, if, if, if you hit, like, maybe, say, 85 and above or, like, 90 and above for air traffic control, then um, those are going to be um, the group of people that they're going to, or candidates that they're going to choose for that career field because they figure the aptitude score was high enough. So, they, the military thinks that um, you have a better potential your chances and you have a higher potential of excelling and succeeding versus being average in that career field. That's the best way I can explain it. So um, let's say you were average at, um, say, even though you had passing scores, you were average in in, um, in mechanics, average, you, you're average, you know what I'm saying, at air traffic control, and say you're average, you know what I'm saying, in, in a general. More than likely what will happen, um, they'll take a look at, you know, um, at the assessment and they'll figure well if the person was average in these areas then um you'll probably wind up wind up probably in supply or either wind up um as a cook you know something um general you know but they take a look at how you performed on your ASVAB in um each area and um even though you may have had a higher score in a certain area if it's not um, like outstanding or it doesn't really register really high enough, then you probably won't get picked for that career field. And so that's basically, um, you know, um, what they're saying. So those that um, obviously have um, the aptitude and ability to score really high in crucial and sophisticated um, career fields, those are going to be the candidates that will likely get those jobs. And those that maybe say, um, score lower or maybe like average they kind of may get pushed into like maybe the mechanical or um, maybe the not the general not so technical um, careers that's pretty much um, how they break it up and how, how they do it all right now um, let's see also um, you have a screening okay so um, with the screening you're assessed on moral and physical standards as um, set by the Space Force, I mean um, Space Force, um, Federal Law and DOD, Department of Defense. Okay, and then you'll be paired basically with a counselor to provide placement options. Okay, and most of these they'll work, you know, with um, ground stations based on your strengths, needs, and qualifications of the military. You know, now let me explain some something about um, Space Force. I'm gonna just um, be real. This right here 
to be honest with you, in order to get into this branch of service, um, it's going to be highly competitive. So they are only going to take um, the cream of the crop in order to get um, into this branch of service and also to get um, the assignments. Now, like any other branch, you know, say obviously everybody's not going to have the most prestigious jobs, you know, and you do need um, your support functions. But for um, Space Force, something like this, they still are going to want um, the cream of the crop even to perform and support functions, you know, and that means that um, in order for any branch of service, you have to really have a good and clean record. And if you're going for Space Force and e any um, special type duty assignments, um, you have to really have an impeccable record. So that means that you got to stay out of trouble. You know, you got to stay out of trouble. Um, Space Force is, this is um, um, geared off of volunteers. So this is not geared off of a draft at this time because we're not fighting any wars in space. So this right here is purely um, volunteer. And this right here, this particular branch of service, even though it's new, um, any space programs, um, those are special duties and those are prestigious um, type of jobs. So um, they're only going to take the best of each branch of service. And for those individuals that are seeking to enlist in this, they're only going to they're, they're going to um, select the cream of the crop. And so that means um, you can't have any felonies. Um, you got to clean up, take care of all your misdemeanors, you know, and you have to have a good, a really good record in order to get into this particular branch of service. And so um, if you guys got on um, anything <laughs> and ladies too, anything, you know, that you need to clean up, you know, on the outside before you go to um, try to qualify for this branch of service, I suggest make sure you do that. Because that's what they're looking for. And that even includes, um, you may have to clean up um, certain tattoos depending on where they place it on the body. If they can be, you know, covered by uniform and um, they're not um, seen, then that's not going to be um, such a big problem. But the military, especially if it's a prestigious job or position, um, they're going to want you to clean up certain tattoos because um, it doesn't represent the military or any branch of service well to be um having tattoos you know like you're you know out in the streets i'm just i'm just telling you what they're looking for okay now as far as um, um training okay what happens um upon enlistment you'll be placed in the delayed entry program where you'll wait for your selection and departure for basic military training in which i, I was in the delayed entry program so basically all it is is that um, once you go through, um, you know, maps and all that stuff like that, and, um, you pass the physicals, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, you meet all the standards, records are good and stuff like that. Delayed entry is when they give you, um, uh, a certain assignment date to report to basic training. And when they do, um, delayed entry program, that means that, um, they probably may have, um, um, more than enough um, volunteer candidates volunteering for the service and so um, they have to give them like um, certain dates for which they are to report um, to basic training so um, this right here is like I said this is prestigious, prestigious um, branch of service so you guys want to make sure that your records are clean you know make sure your records are clean and um, you know do your best to score well on the ASVAB and even see if you can um, prepare for it. Now this is just the enlisted side and obviously for the officers um, it's going to get more stringent because the officer corps has always been smaller than the enlisted side of the house and in order for an officer you're going to have to have um, a college degree you know and I think I believe a minimum of a bachelor's you know if you're going to be um, anything from a uh, second lieutenant on up. Now, um, I'll have to double check and see if the Space Force has anything like a, a chief warrant officer or a warrant officer program. And a warrant officer is an officer, but they run in between um, an enlisted and the actual officer corps. So if they have that, you're still going to have to have education, um, you know, college education in order to become a warrant officer if they do have that, you know. 
in this particular branch of um, service. So um, it's something to look into for those that are interested and obviously um, for those that are in the military that may be looking to transfer to this branch of service. Obviously they have programs where you can you know, tr um, transfer in, you know, provided um, your records are stellar and you have the required education, um, um, you meet the, um, have the educational requirements. But this is just um, the beginning, guys, and something to look into for um, those of you, you know, that um, may want to serve in Space Force and maybe, um, maybe you guys, you know, may want to go, you know what I'm saying, to a space station or something like that. I mean, it's a unique, unique experience, you know. And um, for those that, um, you know, would want to do this, I think it's worthwhile. You know, I, I think it's a, a great career move, you know. But um, more to come. But what I will do, um, I'll leave a link, you know, in the description and I'll dig in um, more. And I got to come with the officer side, but I'll dig in more um, on um, Space Force, you know, and um, provide what I can. But I want to say um, thank you guys for um, listening. Thank you to all my subscribers. And um, I, I will be having more content um, to come. I'll keep it coming. You know, but um, please subscribe to my channel, Every Brothers YouTube. And smash that bell to become a subscriber. Um, hit the like button to like the video. Hit the unlike button. If you don't like it, leave a comment. Either way, love to dialogue with you. And maybe some of you have even more information, or maybe some of you have already volunteered um, for this branch of service. Would love to hear about it. You know, saying please share and um, share with others in the um, in the comment section. You know, Space Force is a new branch of service, but it is uh, this is prestigious. So, um, you know, you, you want to make sure if this is a, a career path you want to pursue. Want to make sure that you have clean records, that your um, your records are impeccable, and that your ASVAB scores are as high as possible. So um, prepare. But I also have a um, podcast called Snack Starts S and A K Z T H O U G H T S Snack Starts, and my podcast you can um, listen to it on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Um, SoundCloud, Radio PBM, and a host of other social media outlets. So please go over to my podcast, Snacks Thoughts, and, and join that as well. And please share Eric Broadus, YouTube, and Snacks Thoughts. Share them with um, friends, family, enemies, frenemies, cats, goats, rats, you know, bats, dogs, whatever. Share it. Share both and push them out, guys. But that's all I have on this one for you guys that um, want to join Space Force. You know, how about that? Close Encounters, guys. Close Encounters. United States Space Force. That's all I have. Catch you guys in the next one. And I have to do the officer side as well. Peace out, guys. Later.